Hey everybody, Arnaldo here broadcasting from Fidelio's Frequency. Welcome to my channel. Today, February 20th, 2024, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary from the release of the debut album from a band that is very dear to me. As you probably noticed from behind me, today we're celebrating KISS, a band that always has a special place in my heart, is very dear to me because they were at the beginning of my journey into music. They ignited my passion for music as an eight-year-old when I first discovered their music. So today, I find it appropriate to celebrate the 50th anniversary from their self-titled debut album, just simply named Kiss. And let's start off, not from the very beginning, but a year prior to the release of this album. KISS was formed in January of 1973 from the ashes of Wicked Lester, the band that Gene Klein and Stanley Eisen were part of, not known yet as Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. They were signed uh, to Epic Records uh, as the band with other uh, two members of Wicked Lester. They recorded an album never released and up until the compilation of a box set a cd box set that came out about 2002 i believe where some of the songs as wicked lester are featured on that box set but the album to this day remains unreleased unless it's in a bootleg format after they were dropped from epic records they decided to start a new band and they named the band kiss recruited two other players First, drummer Peter Criscula, known as Peter Chris from Brooklyn. And last to join was Paul Freely, now known as and commonly known as Ace Freely, because there was already a Paul in the band. Ace Freely from the Bronx. They started writing music, playing some of the songs that Paul and Gene had already uh, written. Uh, while they were in Wicked Leicester, they toured incessantly, local clubs, Coventry, Popcorn in Queens, where Gene and Paul actually lived. And up until Neil Bogart saw them, Neil Bogart was previously a and or promo, I believe, at Buddha Records and decided to form his own label and saw Kiss, saw the potential in them, saw the fire in them, not only figuratively, but also literally, <laughs> as Gene Simmons breathed fire on stage, and decided to sign them, start the label. They were the first band signed to Casablanca Records on November 1st, 1973. Recording sessions for the first album started almost immediately, Actually, they started already in October and uh, continued through November on the heels of a demo that KISS had recorded at Electric Ladyland Studios with um, Eddie Kramer producing and engineering it. They went into the studio very close to Brill Building on 54th Street named Bell Sound. Bell Sound was owned by Buddha Records and Neil Bogart's connections to Buddha Records um, enabled him to secure a very cheap rate for recording at Bell Sound Studios and drafted in Richie Wise and Kenny Kerner to produce the first album. The first album for me probably has some of the most iconic, some of their best songs ever. Uh, songs that remained in their live set, have been featured multiple times over on Greatest Hits compilations, and it's quite shocking they're all on the first album. And we'll get into them briefly in a bit, but uh, Richie Wise and Kenny Kerner wanted to capture, were tasked to capture how the band sounded live. Maybe they didn't succeed fully, but for sure, they captured some of the best recordings of these songs. And some of the songs were previously from Wicked Lester, two of them in particular, Strutter and Let Me Know, got re-recorded for this album. 
And this album has, apart from those two, Nothing to Lose, Firehouse, Cold Gin, uh, written by Ace Frehley, but Ace, not very confident of his vocal skills, gave it to Gene Simmons to sing. Uh, one important thing that I read in Gene's bio autobiography, when he talks about his intention for Kiss, he wanted to model Kiss like the Beatles, one of the one of his favorite bands, and envisioned every member being able to have a solo spot on the albums. And Ace Frehley reluctantly did not want to sing up until Shock Me, much later in their career on the Love Gun album, one of his self penned songs. Therefore, um, Cold Jane was given to Gene Simmons to sing. And Peter, Fer Peter Chris is featured on one of the songs, actually kind of like the second part and the main part of the song, Black Diamond, which is a closer to the album, started by Paul Stanley at the beginning, and then uh, the lead is taken by Peter Chris, who pulls off an amazing vocal. It took six days to record the album and seven days to mix it, and when it was, was released in uh, February of 1974, it didn't get that much attention. Actually, quite a few months went by before any attention was given to this album. And the initial copies that were pressed, and it's around 100,000 copies, do not include a song that is on the version that I have right here. I was never able to find one in a decent shape and get the get a very first pressing which doesn't include kiss in time kiss in time was a promotional gimmick that neil bogart came up with in order to shed some light and promote kiss there was a kissing contest that was going around various radio stations around the nation and they were promised a kiss was promised to be featured in one of the spots in one of the ads if they sang a song called Kiss in Time by Bobby Rydell. They were reluctant in recording it. It didn't really fit with their image or their sound, but agreed to do it, pressured by Neil Bogart. But they altered several of the lyrics and, re and recorded their version of Kiss in Time, which was released as a single. They were not very happy when Neil Bogart decided to repress the album and include it as the first track on the second side. Pushing down, further down the line in the album, Deuce, which I find an amazing second side opener. Unfortunately, I was never able to grab a copy or find a copy in the wild of the very first pressing that doesn't include Kiss in Time and with the Casablanca Blue labels even though there's about 100,000 of them in circulation. Uh, so any of you guys that want to sell a copy of the first pressing of KISS, please leave a comment below. I may be interested. So what else is on here? Uh, the only KISS song that features a writing credit by all four members, and at least all four of the founding members. And it's an instrumental, originally started as Acrobat, later uh, retitled as Love Theme from, Crit from Kiss, and Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons hated that title and deeply regret the, name, the renaming of that song. 100,000 Years, another song on here, another staple from their live set. I think I've named almost every song on the album. So let's talk a little bit about the artwork. Neil Bogart felt that since Kiss were not very popular, they needed the album cover to be striking and to attract someone to actually pit, physically pick it up when they saw it displayed in the store and decided to reach out to Dennis Wallach, uh, art director, who uh, enlisted David Edward Bird to oversee and make sure that the makeup was perfect. Now, oh, and also the photo, this photo was taken by Joel Brodsky, who very acclaimed and very popular rock photographer at the time. He had already done 
the uh, album cover, the photo for the album cover of The Doors' Strange Days, as well as Astral Weeks by Van Morrison. He was recruited for the photo session to take the picture of the uh, album cover. And like I said, David Edward Bird was tasked to make sure that their makeup was perfect. Funny story, all of the members, except for Peter Chris, did their own makeup. He felt, David Edward Bird, that Peter Chris's makeup as it was, and as it has been throughout his entire tenure and career with Kiss, was not striking enough as a Catman and enlisted a makeup artist to make it, to alter the makeup, to make it look more like a cat. Whether it does, it's up for debate. Uh, only time that this makeup on Peter Chris was ever featured because he reverted back to his regular makeup, the one he had from before this photo shoot and afterwards. It took an hour to do the photo shoot, but three hours to finalize the makeup. So it took longer for them to get the makeup ready than actual uh, Joel Brodsky to take the picture. The inspiration for the picture came from none other than the Beatles. As you can see here, the similarities, the four faces with one slightly kind of off center, all draped in black. Here they were wearing a black velvet throw or blanket and none, none you don't see any of their uh they don't have their um, costumes their outrageous costumes and ace freely decided to paint streaks of silver into his hair and ace freely is actually credited for designing the logo of kiss he originally intended these two S's to be lightning bolts. Unfortunately, they took on a whole different meaning in other countries, but that's maybe a story for another video. What else can I say? Today we celebrate the 50th anniversary of an iconic album. Probably in probably one of the albums that KISS has released that stayed in the hearts of their fans the longest. It is, for me, I think the albums that followed, especially the subsequent one that came out later in 1974, Hotter Than Hell was a missed opportunity, and maybe that's a subject for another video. But for today, I guess that's it, and I hope you go ahead and spin this record. For those of you who don't know it, uh, get to know it because it's a great album and for all you kiss fans out fans out there maybe give it another special spin today i guess that's it for today happy 50th anniversary to kiss and i guess i'll see you on the next one thanks again for watching